what experience is what what is an a unique experience that you have as a Paralympian that people might not notice or appreciate? Yeah, good one. Um, I think there's a couple of probably like misconceptions maybe around Paralympic sport. Probably one is that just because someone has a disability doesn't mean they can be a Paralympian. Um, athletes who go to the Paralympics are, yes, they have disabilities, but they are true athletes in their own right. Um, they train just as much as their counterparts, that we say able-bodied athletes, um, and more often than not, they're in the same training environments. So you definitely can't just go to the Paralympics. It's not just like saying, oh, I'm going to go to the Olympics. So um, <laughs> it's, it's, it takes hard work and there's not, it's not always clear-cut. You don't always make the team. Um, one thing I, I am proud about being a Paralympian and someone with disability is that unless you have a disability and we, we have to be like friends and have a really good sort of friendship, you can't make jokes at me about my, me not having a hand. <laughs> Only I can do that. Right. And I think a funny little moment was once we were at a training camp in America before Rio and we all wanted the front seat. Um, we all wanted a shotgun. And I was like, I mean, I'm a shotgun because I don't have a hand. And then my friend's like, no, no, I need a shotgun because I'm missing my lower legs. So I need to stretch <laughs> out. And then someone else is like, I need a shotgun. I can't see. And I'm like, huh? Like, <laughs> and then it's like my friend's like, oh, but I'm in a wheelchair. And I'm like, but you can't even feel your legs. Why do you need the front seat? You know, and it, it's those sort of remarks and feedback that you can't, you only have authority to do so when, when you're in that, that's that um, community. And um, that's what I love about Paralympic sport. And I think, yeah, it's, it's amazing to be a part of the movement. Like if you think about it, going to the Paralympic Games, you have got people from all these different countries with so many different disabilities and they're all in like the one area and like this is this is amazing and there's still a, a long way to go with Paralympic sport. Um, I think one thing is really good for people to know is that majority if not all of the sports don't get prize money um, or the funding as, as able-bodied sports and Para in the word Paralympics actually means parallel, not para, paraplegic or paralytic. And I just found that out last week, actually, after yeah, I watched really? that Netflix documentary, The yeah. Rising Phoenix. Yeah, yeah. that was what I, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, what a great documentary. And um, that is like, you know, that just that awareness is what needs to be get at, getting out there more. And um, it, it's, if it means parallel, let's get it to that point of being parallel. And with the Commonwealth Games, um, we saw last time it was on in, in Australia in Gold Coast, Is it, I think it was probably one of the first times they combined able and para sports and it was a huge success. Um, so uh, granted we've got COVID and um, different events going on, but uh, for me in my triathlon um, and equestrian crew actually, our world championships were combined. And that's awesome. And yeah. um, it's great. So, yeah, I think, you know, there's a lot to embrace there. And I also, too, I think most of the time, if you don't know something about someone, someone's disability, more often than not, we, we get scared of saying the wrong thing. So we don't say anything at all. But just, just ask, like, you know. Yeah. More often than not, someone's more than happy to talk about it or, you know, appreciates the curiosity. 